August 24, 2017. You're looking at the seawall cams in Galveston, Texas, as we watch the approaching hurricane. Notice how tall those clouds are in the very center of the image. Off towards the actual hurricane, you can see rain, rain bands moving in. You can also see, see that it's been raining overnight and into the morning. Look how wet the roads are. So you, you're already getting that. Then you remember they were talking about from a foot to 18 inches of rain. And some of the information on the tracking has changed. Let's take a look at that. This is visible images from satellites above the Gulf of Mexico. You can see it goes from infrared as the sun comes over and it changes to visible light. Check that out. Storm is very large. It's very powerful. It's not a Cat 3 or anything. It's probably going to go to a Cat 1 and, and may get a little stronger than that depending on the forward speed. But um, what they're saying now as far as the National Hurricane Center track is a little further south. And Let's take a look at that. Notice yesterday the eye was more centered towards the Galveston area, which is right there. And then here's your uh, forecast points coming in. This is the 25th. You've got you down into a Cat 1 hurricane. Cat 1 hurricane as it idles along the coast. Check this out. Now, one thing I want to point out. With the track yesterday that was more in this direction as far as center circulation, the water would have, and the high winds are, are on this side of the storm. But now that the track is moving further west, that's going to put the surge here into Galveston instead. You see what I'm saying? Right into there, as long as this track holds up. So, Galveston, you're going to be in for quite a rough ride. You may want to consider leaving the area. I'm, I'm sure that if it becomes a Cat 1, they're going to start evacuating, if they have not already, much of that area. Now, it's not just Texas that's been getting this rain. You can see Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, to the Florida Panhandle, along the uh, western coast of Florida. But here's the center of your storm here. And so as it's throwing these waves out, and the wind, and the tides, guys, right into here. Galveston, if this track holds up, you could have quite a problem on your hand again. I can't overemphasize this. And because of the slow forward speed, the rain is just going to sit there and continue to pour down on you after you more than likely have lost power from the high winds. You're going to have a storm surge, they're saying up to seven feet. Doesn't sound that big unless your boat's sitting on the pier a couple feet below the pier, and then when you come back, it's up on the shore from a seven foot surge. Be aware of those conditions. Now, this is the official track of the National Hurricane Center. We're going to look at the other spaghetti models. But what they're showing, here's where we're at now, tropical storm, tropical storm, tonight at 1 a.m., by 1 p.m. Friday, hurricane. Here and then lingering, there's actually two circles right there as a hurricane. But even at tomorrow night, or tomorrow morning, 1 a.m. Friday, the storm is going to be this much closer, and it's a large storm. It's like this. So... Even as it's a tropical storm in this area, you're already going to get, be getting bombarded by wind and waves and rain, and that's just going to increase if it holds this track. Now, what is the difference in this one and uh, yesterday? If you remember, they had the storm coming up and uh, turning, making a right, coming back through Louisiana and Mississippi. Then late last night, they had it coming up and moving more to the left. But now this morning, it's just kind of a centered track. Will it just come in here and stay as a tropical storm and move further north as it degrades? We're not sure yet. Now, this is a complete uh, combination of the different models. Um, the Canadian model, which is in the purple, is bringing up and moving it back down southwest. You've got um, the white model, which is a TABD coming, setting over Texas, the uh, Mexican border turning, and then going across Louisiana, Mississippi, into Alabama. The red model, which is the AEMN, is also showing this loop. The blue model is showing a loop over Texas, but the red model shows it coming back into the Gulf. That would call, uh, allow it to maintain strength and move right up through Baton Rouge into uh, northern Mississippi into Tennessee. These things change every day. We'll have an update on it this afternoon, but I want to to take a look at this particular 
uh, enhanced satellite image. Guys, just look at the size of the storm. It fills the entire Gulf. And what we're dealing with, and I think why they're so unsure about the track, is that we have a front coming in here. Now, yesterday, they were thinking this thing would come up, get caught under the front again, and turn this way. Then they're not sure if it's going to get caught up and be pushed this way. The whole front's moving southeast. You see that? So now, it's the, it, and the way they're describing it, they've got a double effect. You're pushing this way. You're pushing this way. So one thing for sure, regardless of which way this front turns it, it's going to set over this section of Texas for quite a while, long enough for extreme flooding. Again, a very large storm. And putting this into motion, just want to emphasize where you see this large area here. This is the forward push of the storm. So you're going to have offshore winds in this area, onshore winds in this area, along with the tide. The tide won't be high here. It's going to be very high in this area. And again, this is the front that's battling on how long it sits there and which direction it will look eventually take. And looking at the water vapor loop, this storm is controlling quite a bit of the area of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this red area is extreme dry air, and it's part of the, the outside air that's being pushed by the front that is controlling the storm. So that this area here may have a lot to do with keeping the storm more in this direction as it pumps out all the rain. Just depends on the strength at that time and how quickly this area moves. We'll be watching that. Now, this is the smaller low-pressure area that is setting off the coast of Florida. It's called 92L or Invest 92L. And it's really strange. And did you notice, for the first time this year, as these storms get inside the Gulf or near that area, the spaghetti models normally tighten up and become, they kind of become a um, one as far as where the different prediction centers are tracking the storm to go. So this is 92L. Now, if it continues from its current location here across Florida, it could strengthen in the Atlantic somewhat. We don't know what it would do. All the models are showing it going to the North Atlantic. But this one particular model here and the red model show it a loop coming back into the warmer waters and then a large loop from the TABD. Check this out, guys, right there. So the best scenario would be come over Florida um, and not rebound, re-strengthen into a hurricane, and then re-blast the same area, get it on out of the way. Now, guys, an update has just come in from the National Hurricane Center as I'm ending this video. Things have changed drastically. Now, I'm from a Cat 1, not to a Cat 2, but to a Category 3 hurricane. Do you realize what kind of damage that can do? Let's look at something. This is what they call the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale. Now... A Category 3 here is listed as a major storm. 11 to 129 mile per hour winds sustained. Think about that. Then you've got gust above that. Devastating damage will occur. It's right, All that info is right here in this section. Devastating damage will occur. Well-built frame homes may incur major damage or removal of roof decking and gable ends. Many trees will be snapped or uprooted, blocking numerous roads. Electricity and water will be unavailable for several days to weeks after the storm passes. As you, are you listening? You do not need to stay in this area. <clears throat> we were 120 miles inland when Katrina hit. Mississippi, 120 miles inland. It knocked out millions of trees. It knocked out water and electricity in our area that far for two weeks in the heat of the summer. That's what's about to happen in Texas along that coast. You're going to be without power, without air conditioning, without water, without food, with no power. You can't use your ATM cards to put gas in your car. Go fill your cars up now and leave. Don't stay, leave. We're watching this. It's a heads up. Be safe.